Good morning, everybody. I wanted to show you this card that I made. This is the front of the card, and then the inside of the card is like this. It has the pop-up vase inside. So I thought I would do just the inside in case that was what you were looking for. And then after that, I will go ahead and show you how I did the front. But if you don't want to watch that part, then, you know, you can just move on. But let's put this up here. Hopefully you can see that. But these are all my pieces that I cut for the vase inside. And I went ahead and did my water coloring for this. And these are little pieces for the outside. So let me show you for the vase. These are the pieces you're going to need. It's going to be a two and a quarter by five. And this is what I used the designer series paper for, but I wanted to do it in something that was a little sturdier that I could keep for a pattern for myself. And I suggest you do that for yourself. That way, if you get confused, you have something to reference and look at. So two and a quarter by five, you score it at one and at four. Then you turn it and you score up to the one inch line at three quarters and three quarters. So you're gonna wanna make you know the two tabs on this side and then the other tab on this side. So you just score up to the three quarter inch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. I just want you to see um, these measurements and I'm gonna do a PDF on this. And if you would like one, Give me a minute or two to make it and then I will send it to you. Probably take me a day or so. I am on summertime. So then the next piece is three quarters by three and seven eighths. And you score here at the end at three eighths. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So, but this is just so you know what the pieces are three quarter by three and seven eighths. Then the last piece that's going to be the stopper to hold your mechanism and make it do its thing and, you know, not flop all over is um, one half by two inches. And then you're going to put tape on either end. You don't score it or anything. You just put tape on either end and then it will go down like this. So your stopper piece is one half by two inches. So that piece, I, you know, you can make it out of designer series paper, whatever you want to do. You're not going to see it. So you know, it's up to you. You have a little scraps of paper that you want to use up. Just use them for that. So let's leave these right here. And then I'm going to move this to the side because I'm going to bring in my scoreboard so I can do the scoring. I'm going to show you the paper real quick before we move on. So this is the paper that I used. It's called Textured Chic. And I just think it is so pretty. It's got all of this gold embossing on it. Of course, you know, this is my favorite piece right here. I love this one. Love pink. But on the back side, there are some beautiful prints. So I hope you can see this. It's just gorgeous. The leaves on this one really pretty on that side too and this looks like barn wood to me with that pattern and then um seashells on this one so it's all season there's flowers on the back of this one i think it's just really pretty another piece of barn wood i think on the back of it and then i know there's snowflakes that's really pretty on the back side. Oh, yeah, this one. So pretty. This one I've got my eye on. Look at those beautiful snowflakes. And the colors in this is just pretty. It's a soft succulent and uh, pool party. But for my card, I use soft succulent and balmy blue. And um, it just, it's so pretty. So let's get started. Oh, I put my scoreboard up. So sorry. Let's try this again. Let's bring this over here. I'm going to set my card up out of the way and move my pieces over here so you can still see them if you haven't written them down. Over here. All right. So I'm going to bring in my piece 
of designer series paper. I just want to make sure that you can see this. Let's put that up there for a minute out of the way. So you're going to bring it in. And what you're going to want to do is you want to do your score lines. At the five, this is the five inch. So you want to score at one and four. And with designer series paper, try not to be too rough on it because it does tend to tear easier because it's thinner. But hopefully you can see the score lines. So fold them a little bit so you can see them a bit better. So hopefully you can see those. And then what you want to do is you want to bring it in and hopefully you can see to score those. If not, you can always flip it over to the other side if you can see it better. So what you want to do is you want to score at three quarters. So that would be at the, um, so let's go here. Sorry, my brain has forgotten to kick in today. So we want to do it. I'm going to do it on this side just so I don't mess it up. So three quarters is right here, right before the one. So three quarters. And then you just want to score down to the two, to the inch line. So just make sure. Nope, I got that score line right up to the one. And if I think about it, if you come over here to the one on this side, then you can see and make sure that you're not going down past that line. So score down. Okay. And then if you turn it over and score at three quarters on this side, just so you don't mess it up. Okay, three quarters. You might want to reinforce that. So, oops, get my get it into the track there. So three quarters and three quarters, and then you just turn it around, do it again, three quarters, and just watch that you don't go past the score line. If you want to put your finger there for a reference. Then I always just turn it over to make sure that the score line is the same, that I don't mess it up and um, score where I'm not supposed to. So you have your score lines. If you go over it a little bit, you know, it's not a big deal. If you just take your, take this and rub it, you can rub the line out if you went a little past it. There's always ways to, um, fix things when you're crafting, you know, and we just don't want to get too, too excited about it. So I'm going to bring in a piece of the soft succulent and we want to score this at three eighths. So this is one fourth. So this would be one eighth and three eighths. And we just want to score right there. Trying to get my fingers out of the way and still score at the same time. So there we go. And then we'll bring in our little stopper piece here. Right there. Okay, we're going to use these pieces. Because I forgot to cut the white. But I do have the soft succulent here. So let's move this out of the way. Okay, and you just have to do a little cutting on this. And let's bring in our example. So you remember, we want to have the one tab on one end and the two tabs on the other end. And so as you can see the score line there, cut right up to the line, right up to the line. And you want to make sure that you cut this correctly because it does affect your whole mechanism. So just take your time and do this one. Do it correctly. And then if you're worried that you cut it wrong, make sure that 
you want to make sure that this will fit inside of here see and it doesn't so I need to cut a little bit more off of this so that it fits in there so make sure and pay attention to the score lines they are important if you need to take a little bit more off of it just make sure that your pieces are going to fit like they're supposed to so you want to line it up and it has to fit in there so I must have cut this just a tiny bit big you can take a little bit off of it and that's the thing when you're doing it um, the preparation is the most important part it's like when you're painting a room you know you want to make sure that everything is prepped and ready to go and if you need to take a little bit off of that piece then you know take a little bit off of it so that it does its job like it's supposed to there we go so that fits on there perfectly and you want it to slide it's got to slide through I just want to make sure you know what these are doing so they're going to slide through that opening so you want to make sure that your piece of paper actually fits so we're going to make this the two tabs over here and we're going to cut this one off that tab off then we go to the other side and we're going to need one tab over here so we'll take these two tabs off and do the same thing make sure that you fit it so that you know that it's going to do its job because sometimes with the pattern paper it's really hard to see where your score line is so let's do this right here so we want this i'm going to fold this piece back and then take these two off and the placement of your tape is the other thing that you want to make sure that you have it right and do use um, tear and tape because you don't want it um, if you use liquid glue there's a chance that it's going to go everywhere that you don't want it to go let's put our little pieces here so hopefully will be make sure yep, perfect okay so let's look at our example I always look at my example to make sure so the piece of designer series paper that you want to show on the front and then the back side so the back side is where you're going to put your tape right here for your mechanism so let's bring in our tear and tape and usually I don't cut tear and tape but for this one um, I was trying to be really careful you don't want it to go past this so that it sticks out so I actually actually was a little bit more careful with my tear and tape I want it to be perfectly straight so then you just and you don't want it to go over the edges and stick and make your mechanism not work correctly so your tearing tape is going to go on the single tab on this side on the back side of the paper that you want to show then your tearing tape will go on the front of these two tabs where you do want your paper to show so i had to do this several times before I felt comfortable doing it uh, it's a video and I do encourage you to use some paper that you don't really care about first just so you know that you have um, have it down before you start using your good designer series paper because it's really easy to get confused when you're doing like the tape on the front the tape on the back and then there's so many pieces that you know you just don't want to mess it up so let's put our tear and tape on this piece right here and then our tear and tape for this piece we want it on the top and the bottom
in this card. It is a little fiddly at first until you get um, used to doing it, but once you do it a couple of times, it'll be okay. So I always bring in my phone folder just to um, press down the tear and tape so it makes it easier to release this protective coating. So let's let's burnish it. It's over here. Go ahead and burnish this one. I'm going to burnish these. And then turn this over and burnish these. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to leave that up there because I'm going to need it again. All right. So like I said, I went ahead and did the front of this card and the inside. And then after this part of it, I'll show you how I did the front of it if you are interested. So you want to take your um, pick tool and take off the protective lining here. And if you've come close to the edge, you want to make sure that it doesn't, it hasn't went over the edge or the ends. You just feel along the edge. And if there's any sticking out, make sure that you um, bend it back over. And then we'll just put this on here. And then just press it down. So then what you want to do is you want to bring your card over and you want this as close to the bottom as you can without going below. So then you just slide it back, slide it back, and then I hope you can see this. I, I wanted to use this color against the white so hopefully it would pop up, pop out and you could see what you need to do. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to line up the score line with this tab, with this piece that's um, attached to that tab. And then you want to make sure that your base piece is down near the bottom. So they're both lined up. You want to peel the protective layer off. And then you want to close this. Make sure. Yeah. So if you get confused, which I still do get confused, you can look at the inside. So it butts up against it. it I'm sorry. It butts up against your score line. See, I still even get confused, but that's why it's good to have a prototype to look at. So then you just butt it up against the seam and then you just press it down. So then it attaches to this side and then it flips back like this. So we'll give this a burnish. Sorry about that. I hope that wasn't too confusing, but it just look at if you can see it from this side. So it just butts up against the score line and then it attaches to this side and then flips over. So we're ready for our stopper. So let's bring it in it's up here. You want to take your tear and tape off of here. And I'm trying to go slow just so you know you can see how this all goes together because I had to watch several videos before I could actually get it to make sense to me. And some people are like me. They don't get it as quick. And other people, they're just like, oh yeah, I know. But you know, so what you want to do is you want to line this up. You don't want to go above and you don't want to go below. And you want to try to get it close to the paper without impeding its progress. So just line that up. 
press it down. And then flip this over. So now you're going to have to take the tear and tape off of this, off these other tabs. Let's take this off. I think because it's front and back and you're flipping over and everything, I think sometimes that's where the confusion comes in. So hopefully this will help you um, master this card. And then right here, I've got some tear and tape sticking over the edge. You want to fold that back. I'm gonna make sure that none of it's sticking out where it's not supposed to. So then you fold these over. And this is the most fiddly part of this card. So I'm going to fold this over. And don't just try to get the tabs underneath because you want to make sure that this is going to pull the mechanism works correctly. So you can see that it's working. So what you want to do is you want to fold these under. And you want to make sure you can see inside of here that they're on either side of that tab inside. You don't want them to attach to that tab because then it's not going to work. So we're going to bring those tabs. I just want to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be on the inside. So then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to close this so that then the vase will rest where it's supposed to and take your time if you need to do it a couple of times you just want to make sure that it I want to see if I can open it up so you can see inside that's the hard part about making a video and letting people see what's happening it's hard to get it inside okay. and tear and tape it's really sticky all right so we want this to close and it needs to be flat when it when it folds and you don't want your paper below sticking out you take your time and if you need to adjust it just go back in and adjust it before it folds all the way so you know it's going to pull up and see it working before you finally get it down all the way so just barely, barely tap it so that it, it does its thing the right way. You just want it, see, down a little farther than I wanted it to. And if it does that, just trim it, you know, if it sticks down, and it comes out the bottom, just trim it up. So, it wasn't too painful, and it pops up the way it's supposed to. Hopefully, I went slow enough so that it, it made sense to you. So, see if you can, see if we can see down inside how that it works. So, then it pops up. So then when you put your flowers in, just make sure that you start and your flowers are going to go on the vase. So what you want to do is you want to put, you could either put glue dots or you could use regular glue, but you want to make sure you give it time to dry before you start closing your card. So let's put, or you could even put tear and tape because these are big enough that you could do that so that's another thing you learn when you do a couple of them what works and what doesn't work so tear and tape's very sticky so it would be 
just make sure, you know, it doesn't go over anything that it's, if it's too wide for the stem, then don't put it on it. But you could always cut your tear and tape. See, I, I put it in these places that it won't show on the back side. So then you just peel it off. And it sticks really nice. And I cut the other um, stems that are going to go in here longer than they need to be. And then I'll just trim them when I'm ready to put the pieces in. And I cut a big bunch of them. So, so you just want to put this in. And you also want to be mindful that when you're putting these pieces in that they don't extend over the top. So with these ones, there's a, these are really long. So what I did is I just cut them off and then you can figure out where you want them to be. And this one I cut a little short because I want it to be taller than that. I'm a little carried away. So that's why you cut a bunch of them in case you get um, carried away and cut too much off of them. So I'm going to just cut that and then that way it'll give me a lot of height. So this is what I want to do. I want to, I'm going to put these together before I put them in and then that way you don't have to put as much glue on them. So I want these up as tall as this one. So let's put it like this. And you can use some tape if that if it doesn't come through the back, but that might come through the back. So we won't do that. And I want some pink in here. Of course we must have some pink. So let's see this guy right here. They all get kind of stuck together because of those little wings on it. So, let's be pretty in the center. So, let's put that in the center. And then we will put this one over here so it all has the same height. I like it. So, we will put a little tape on it. And then, I'll make sure that it doesn't... Show through the back side. So then you flip it over and you put the same size of tape on the back side and stick them together. So just make sure there's no sticky on either side if you do that. And then you can put it in. And I think it's easier if you create it and then put it on the inside. Isn't that pretty? I like it. So let's put some glue and be, be very careful with your glue. You just want to put just enough on it to hold it without going over. anything so I just put little dots if you can and then that's where I have the tape so that makes it nice it gives me more of an area to put the glue on and then we just put it right like that you can see the glue there and then we'll just stick it behind this like this and if you want it fuller you can add even more you know just make sure that it doesn't come above your card base okay give it a minute to dry oops I may have to trim that one down a little more and if you trim them it's all right flowers sometimes get get a little 
trim. We'll just trim these two off the top. There you go. Isn't that cute? I love how it turned out. And then if you want to, I, I didn't want to cover up this designer series paper. And if you wanted to write a little something, you could always write on the back. But you can even write on this if you want to. I just didn't want to cover it up. I just thought it was so pretty. So it works, which is always a good thing. So hopefully that helped you and you can create your own. And if you want to stick around, I'll show you how I did the front of this card. So this is... These are some new products I want to show you. Well, they're new to me. I just want to show you them. So this is, you know, I always use the shimmer paper if I am going to be doing any kind of watercoloring or painting on there. I'm going to put these over here in case you need to see this again. So the sizes. Or the inside mechanism. So this is a new die and it's called Fabulous Frames. And I thought it cut out the whole thing at once, but it actually cuts, hence the name, frame. So it cuts out the frame and then you have this piece if you want to keep it. And these are, these are the dies and this is the die that I used. So it has the really pretty embossing on it. And I haven't used these other ones yet. I want to use them, you know, like the corners of a picture, the old timey ones. So I'm going to use those and I'll show them to you. But fabulous frames. And then I also used a new one that is called dots and spots. And this is so cool. So this is the piece that I cut out. And then it allows you to see some more of the designer series paper through the front. And then I used, of course, for the flowers, I used the Nature's Harvest and the dies. So some of the paper stuck in there. But these are the dies that come with it. Okay, now I'll show you real quick. So this is one that I made before. And I tried to do a little bit of uh, clear embossing on it, but it didn't turn out um, because I used mar I used markers to color the flowers. And I'll show you what I mean. Put these up here. This right here. Hopefully you can still see that. Do this piece. And I need these pieces. I keep all kinds of pieces handy in case I need them when I'm doing the video. So all you want to do is you want to go ahead and glue your pieces down. And that backside's pretty to this too. Oops. You just want to, I cut this to cover the whole card front. Because I love this paper. I just think it's so pretty. But I do love this soft succulent. Isn't that a beautiful color? So then this is the inside. That's a pretty paper again. Drop my other glue in the floor. Good thing I always have three or four sitting on my desk. And look how pretty the back side of that piece is. So I just put this on the inside and I think it cut a little big, but that's okay. Put that on the inside. So pretty. And then this, of course, is going to be at an angle. And for this, you can just go around the holes. And, you know, if you go around the outside, then you really won't have to do much of the inside because it'll hold it down for you. But just make sure you don't get any squishing out the holes. You know, if you want to put some dots in there, just, just think it might move. It shouldn't, but, you know, you can do that. And then let's put this at an angle. 
like this. So pretty. So then what I do is I bring in my stamp, and I love this one, and I don't know why I put my markers away. I thought I, thought I was finished. And I moved my markers. Why did I do that? Oh, all right. So, hmm. I don't know. All right, we're going to um, do this a different way. All right. So I did this one too, this way. So I brought in my water painter. And I did the stems. You can paint on your um, stamps with your water painter if you don't have markers or you put your markers somewhere and you can't find them. So, like I said, there's always a way around whatever you misplace. There's always another way to do it. And this gives you more of a watercolor look, which is really cool. So just paint with your water painter. And just have your tissue handy so you can change your color. You just want to get that color out. And then you want to do the blue. Isn't that pretty? So then just paint. And then if you need more color afterwards, after you stamp it, then you can just come back in with your water painter and add some more color. I'm going to need some yellow. More of the blue. Mm. I don't want my yellow to be mixed up with my, and I use crushed curry for this. So just grab some of your crushed curry and just paint on here. Put this to the side. I did find a yellow marker, so we're going to give that yellow just a little more yellow. Get that to be yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay. So then, what you want to do is you want to bring this in and you want to stamp it. And it's not going to cover the whole thing, just so you know. Give it a minute to soak into the paper. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? Gives it a really pretty watercolor look when you do it like that. So then if you want to, you can always come back in and add a little bit more. I think it needs a little bit more yellow. I'm going to press this. Get some ink in the top of your... case there and then you can come in and you can add some more and, just, and then it kind of looks like brown I think which is really pretty because it needs to be dark to stand out on the leaves of the flower and if you want to you could paint this with Winkasella which is really pretty so you come in with your Wink of Stella. Look, this is a new one, brand new one. So don't want to get it too crazy. But you could just add some. And then that would pull some of the ink around to the edges. As you know, I love glitter. So... 
This just adds a little bit to it. You know, and thinking about it, I did not use balmy blue. I used pool party. Because that's the predominant color in there. I was thinking about using balmy blue. That's what it was. So just so you know, this is pool party. And then um, soft succulent and crushed curry. And if you wanted to, you could bring in a little bit of early espresso. And just kind of touch the bottoms of this cone. And you could just add some dots if you wanted to. You know how it has those little round dots in it. And then if you wanted to, you could even fill in the stems. But I kind of like them as they are. You know, whatever you like. They're all different. Look how different they are. I mean, this is so much different than that one. This one is so much different. <laughs> and then even this one is totally different. So it's just however you use your water painters. And it just, you know, it's different. I can't decide. I like this one and I like this one. So I guess I'm going to have to make another card. So what I did for this front piece with the frames is, I think, yep, yeah, I did. I used my adhesive sheets and then um, attached it to the um, shimmer paper. I don't know if I can get it started. Oh, I thought I did. Oh, I didn't on this one. I did on this one. So sorry. You can do it either way. You can put glue on it or you can use your um, adhesive sheets. And then it's easier to stick it down because these lines are pretty fine. And you just put that on here. You could put it at an angle because, you know, I love angles. I don't know. I like this one. I think it's so cute. And I even used adhesive on the back of this. Hopefully it won't smear my paint. Very sticky. So then you can just put it right back in your frame. You don't have to worry about the loose squishing out. Isn't that pretty? Love it. So for this one, I want, congratulations, a friend of mine, a good friend, retired. And I don't know if I sent her a card. And I want to send her a special card. She's the sweetest person. So I got a new stamp set. Charming Sentiments. And this actually comes with dies that cut out your sentiment. And I haven't done that yet. I'll have to make a card and show you that. But it has a die set that goes with it. And I haven't put it in with it yet. So just want to stamp the congratulations. It's kind of at an angle. I'm not going for the angle on our stamp. I'll just try it again. Oh, there we go. So then what you want to do is I just cut it at an angle. And then just use blue dots. I think I must have put everything away. My blue dots and my um markers i put them in a safe place i'm sure i'll find them so then you just want to use your glue dots and pop it up you save that piece because that's big enough for another sentiment let's just pop this across here and then i'm gonna have to do a ribbon and then 
these little bees, these little bumblebees. They're so cute. So I use um, glue dots for when I want to put down pieces like that that are a little bit heavy. Just use a glue dot to get off of there. Just put it on the back side of your bee. And just put him right there. It's so pretty. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it wasn't confusing. It helps you to make your own pop up card, which is just so. See, I'm going to have to make another one for this one. I should be pretty good at it after I make six or seven of them. Hopefully, this will help you make your own. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And I will see you soon with another new card. Take care. Bye-bye.